everyone and welcome back to my channel um, today I thought I would have a go at doing some um, postcards like these ones that you've I've shown on my channel thought we'd have a go at something like that um, and for that I'm using these now these are just watercolor postcards I bought them off uh, from Amazon they're called Sea White of Brighton they're 350 GSM and they're watercolor postcards you get 12 in a pack they're about four pounds something like that um so you know good value and they're fine for this purpose i'm using my arteza watercolors that i had gifted to me from the lovely mel from melis makes but um you know you can use any any watercolors it really doesn't matter um i did swatch these out um yesterday so i've got that and I've just sprayed them with a bit of water you won't be able to see this and I should probably use them direct from the pans so I probably won't be mixing any colors um, but I have sprayed them with water to activate them I've got a number seven brush if I'd got a six to hand I'd use that because um, this is slightly too big but it's, it's okay and what I firstly I'm going to do is pin my um, paper to my desk or when I say pin and I'm using, let me find the lid, I'm using this, which is frog tape, delicate surface frog tape. I think it's for decorators, but I bought it because I wanted something that I know would not peel the paper off. And I've had problems with some of my masking tape before, but it's very, very thick, as you can see. It's about, well, it's over an inch. It must be about, oh, I can't measure it on anything here, about three centimetres more than so um, I've cut them in half, the strips, and then I shall use those. So let's put it somewhere and just make sure that you use the straight edge, obviously. And I'm going to leave myself a little border. So this does two jobs. It leaves a border like, like this all the way around the outside. And it also keeps the paper um, flat because watercolour paper, because you've put a lot of water on it, it does tend to buckle up a bit. So this will help with that too. And this tape is great. I've used it. As long as you use a little bit of heat to take the tape off, or if you warm the tape up with a heat gun, it comes off brilliantly and you can reuse it. And I've used it on um, two projects. I haven't gone further than that. I think, you know, that's two is usually enough, but... Um, it's definitely worth it. And again, the tape, I can't remember how much that was, but about, I'd say about five pounds, something like that. I might be wrong. I was just looking for something to try. Right, so I'm just gonna make sure that that is sealed onto my paper. And I'm going to need a pencil. I'm using my, oops, I'm using my retractable pencil. Um, I've got a selection of my drawing pens, a rubber. I've even got a Uniball Air because that I find that will um, that will draw when no other things will draw. We're going to try and make sure that we um, wait for this to dry, but um, you know I am impatient, so sometimes my pens don't work terribly well over watercolour. Okay, so let's get started. I'm just going to do something simple, I think. Um, I don't know whether I want to do a heart one or just a, I just think I'll just do a flower. So I'm going to start with the centre of my flower. And I'm not doing anything, you know, I'm just doing light strokes. I don't even know if they'll turn up on camera. And then petals. And I, want, I do want my petals to be large and I do really want them, some of them, to um, come off the page like this. And I'm, I'm not really sort of drawing. It's quite hard because I'm very used to moving my paper when I draw and finding a comfortable place. So um, this is quite, um, I don't like being restrained, but it's necessary for the watercolour. Okay, so you can do this. These are stylized. They're not, we're not trying to get anything that looks like anything we've heard of. I'm just yeah, something like that would do. I wish these ones should I do them a bit longer? I'm contemplating making them a bit 
bit longer like that. Yeah, let's do that. Because it really is the star of the show. Like that. That one doesn't go on. That's fine. That one. Something like that, I think. That will do. And we'll have some leaves. So let's imagine we've got a leaf uh, coming out here, maybe. Maybe one down here. That's not a very good leaf shape, but I'll fiddle with that in a minute. And one down there. I think that will do. Right, so I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to use, I'm just going to start with an 05. It doesn't really matter what you use, just something that you know you can um, put water on. So this definitely says on it, it's pigment ink for water, um, waterproof and fade proof fine lines. So I know that when I put water on this after it's dried and I will heat set it, I think before I do anything, when I put water on it, it won't run. If you, you know, do a colour fast test or whatever first if you're worried. Um, because you don't want, you don't want black ink running into your delicate watercolours. Right, so now I'm just going to go over this. And I'm not being particularly fussy, so if it... You know, if I'm not necessarily going over the lines, my pencil lines even, I'm just going to do it. Like that it doesn't it doesn't really matter because you can play around with it in the final stage as well um, let's have a look that one like that it's odd drawing at this angle like right, this leaf. like that I think I'm just changing this one like I said it's a guide the pencil lines and we'll just have a leaf like that right, I will be going over these so I'm not too fussed about them next job rubbing your pencil lines away Okay, right. Now I'm going to start with my background, my sky. I'm keeping my petals white, so I don't want to put any paint. I don't want any water on these because um, water will, um, will make, make the paint leach onto it. So I'm going to try not to do that. Okay, I'm going to try not to hit the camera as well. Now, from my experience, I'm right-handed and I can't move my paper around. I keep starting here and going round and then I get to here and I'm wanting to put my hand on everything that I've painted. So the idea is I'm going to start at the top left and work around. So that has come from experience, guys. So I'm going to start, I think, with this one here. And I'm just putting plain, this is just water, nothing else. Um, actually, it's usually it's easier if you've got a bit of a dirtier water, to be honest, because then you can see where you've been. And then I'm going to put some of the blue paint in it, like that. The other thing I've got on standby, which I didn't say, is some kitchen paper, just in case I want to dry my brush a bit if I've got too much water. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to put a little of the dark blue paint just along the edge there and maybe in there as well let's see what we can do with that right then i'm doing the same again and i'm just going to work around it and you can feel free to speed this up if you want or you can watch me do it in real time Okay. 
careful. Right. Now I think I'm going to do this little bit here in there. Down there like that, that will do, I think. And we've got a very large area. In fact, it is all one area now, so that's not a problem, but we'll just make sure that we try and keep the flowers white. Try and keep, not so fussed about the leaves because I'm gonna paint those in a minute, but I will try to just keep the background where I want it. Somewhere like that. And it's quite hard to see when you're just using water, but I'm trying not to go over the outlines. I'm also not going to worry about it too much either. Drop some paint in, and the paint should only go where the water is. So, and if we've got a bit of a gap, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to go in with another thicker pen in a minute, so it won't hurt. There we go. Now, a little bit more colour into this. It's looking a little bit washed out. And now, this inspiration has come from a watercolour course that I decided to, I saw it advertised on um, Instagram, I think. Don't do what I just did, which is. It's talking. Forking and painting at the same time. Hopefully I can get rid of that with some water and kitchen paper. Just put a little bit more paint back in. There, hopefully we won't notice that bit. Yeah, so I was, I was, searching, I was looking on Instagram and I saw um, somebody nobody i followed just um this you know like a random thing that was saying about a watercolor postcard course and i thought oh well i'll you know it was ten dollars and i thought oh well i'll do that well it worked out about seven pound forty or something like that um, which i figured was pretty good value five videos well this is where the inspiration has come from from that and um I've enjoyed, I wouldn't say I've enjoyed the videos, but um, the person, I, I enjoyed the technique, put it that way. Um, it, they are recorded live videos and it, there's, a, there's a, just a lot of, in my opinion, unnecessary um, stuff. I, I just wanted to get on and do it. I didn't, I didn't want to say hello to a million people and that I didn't know and things like that. So I just I just wanted to crack on. But um, it was worth the money, definitely, just to give me this bit of inspiration because I've really enjoyed doing these. And I've done quite a few and I can see myself um, working on this and doing something, doing something else, you know, building up on it. 
Right, just adding a tiny bit more water where I've put the dark paint and hopefully I can move it around a little bit. So I don't really just want a line. But I'm just gonna have to let that dry. And then we'll come back and do the leaves. Oh, I'll tell you what we could do. I've got two pots of water, one for my dirty brush and one to put in for my clean. But I'll tell you what we could do, because this bit doesn't touch anything. If I can do it without my hands going on what I've done. But I'm just going to do the centre of the flower. And I've just put some water on my paint and put that straight on here. I'm not wetting this bit. I'm going to be careful and I'm going to take a bit of the orange as well if I can. that in while it's wet. I might just leave that and see what happens when it dries. Okay so I'm going to dry this with a heat tool a bit and then I'll be back. So this is dry more or less. It's a little bit patchy. I'm not going to worry about it. It's not important and I'm just going to go in with some water and the same again but I'm just doing the leaves this time so I think this technique is called wet on wet or something like that, but I'm not too f not too fussed about the technical terms. I'm not too fussed if I'm doing it right or wrong. I'm having fun, and I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the process, and I'm actually enjoying what I'm creating as well. So. on there. I have got a different colour paint. I might just, different green, I might just put a little bit in. I do like how the two colours sort of react, that's all. See so what happens with that? Right. We'll do this leaf. I think I probably should have done this one first. Of that paint that I've got dripping there. Hopefully it's not seeping under the um, tape. this leaf and again we've got to let this dry and it's got to dry quite a long time well either dry naturally or you're gonna to have to use your um, heat tool on it I'm lazy I will definitely use my heat tool um, but it needs to be dry because you're gonna put pen over the top and you don't want to ruin your pens if your paper's a bit damp So, I 
like I say, don't worry too much, you've got a little bit of a white gap. We're going over with a thicker pen, it won't matter, you won't see it. Let's just take a little of this. Push it around a bit, let them mingle. them react to see what they want to do I'm not going to force their relationship they can sort it out themselves there we go and I think I'm just going to leave that now I'm going to dry it and when it's dry I will be back to do some final touches I've just finished drying this with a heat tool so this should these um, papers should come off really easily now um, if you've left yours to air dry um, and you've got some way of heating it, just give it a little blast of heat and these the sticky comes off much easier. Oops, we've had a bit of a seepage there, but not going to worry about that. There we go. And then this one here. On the whole, it's done a pretty good job of keeping the um, paint at bay. stick that there all right now I can move my postcard a bit I will need a little bit more tape and I'm going to just cut off some off the end here and um, I'll show you what we need it for but it's just a very very tiny amount you could use a piece of paper anything so the first thing I do is get a thicker pen so this is an eight and I'm going to use that and I'm going to go around all of the lines if this pen works if not I'm going to resort just to my zebra pen or whatever it's called and just take your time follow your line if you've got white space then put your lines you know on the like that bit there you can color it in a bit if you need to this pen does not feel great. I don't use these ones very much. For when I'm doing it in my doodles, I tend to use the smaller pens, like twos, threes, ones. And this is an eight, and it I obviously haven't crushed the nib enough or something. Also, sometimes it's a little bit hard to draw on watercolour paper. It's not smooth. Plus you've got paint on there now. Anyway, I'm just going to... Help this pen along. Right, just there, there's a bit of white. So I'm just going in. centre. I will come back to the centre because there's something else I want to do with that. I'm thickening up this black line. Let's do the leaves while we think about it. Is that actually working? Swapping my pen over. It doesn't seem to want to, to go th find this pen tends to draw on virtually anything where I have trouble with any other pen this will this will do it it's a uniball air and that's all I can tell you about it I don't know anything more I don't know I doubt it's waterproof I wouldn't put it down first and then um, put your watercolor on it I bet that would bleed but um, it's fine for like afterwards going over things it's just like even if you're doing it on acrylic paint and things like that, I find it works better than anything else anyway. Right, let's have I'm just gonna do some stylized leaves, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Oh, 
Right, so. Uh, now I'm going back into here. Now where we've got a gap between the petals, I'm going to colour that in black. And where we don't have one, I'm just going to um, give a bit of weight where it joins the circle-y bit. So I'm just sort of adding a bit there. And a bit like that. Right, next job, I'm going with a very small, very thin pen. So this is a one. And all I'm gonna do is draw lines on the petals. And I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I mean, you could use a ruler, but if you do that, it loses its organic appeal and it doesn't really matter if the lines touch or go wobbly or a bit curved don't worry about it you know flowers are kind of natural things they're not um no they don't conform to um you know like rigidity and things like that so i usually start in the middle I'm literally not precious about this at all because I think it looks more natural if you just do it and not think about it too much. Just Obviously, if you've done a thicker line around it, it's much easier, you know, to, to not go over the edge. So nearly there. Same here. And up here. Now, when we've got the ones at the edge, I strongly recommend that you use a bit of tape because um, if you're me, you nearly always, even though you're careful, you can use a bit of paper or something. Oops. Um, otherwise, you just go over the edge and it just, it just looks better if all the lines finish together. Even one that's just slightly longer looks a bit ropey. But, you know, it's up to you. You could just stick a bit of paper there or ruler or something. It just neat keeps it neat. To, she says, looking at her atrocious. Oh, I've done that, but I can't possibly work at that angle. There we go. And just find a position that works for you. You know, that's what I said about moving it around. And I don't like the restriction of having the whole piece... Um, stuck down because I like to be able to rotate for what feels more natural in my hand. And then the last one up here. Nearly done guys. Oh, that's not level is it? And there's that. And I'm used, definitely using the edge of the tape, not the bit where I cut. I cut here and that was the previous cut so that I know that it's straight. There we go. Right, one last thing. I'm going with a slightly thicker pen. I don't know what pen to use. I could use a three, something like that. I might end up using that. Um, I call it a zebra pen. It's not a zebra pen because they do do a zebra pen, but it looks like a zebra. So, Uniball Air. So what I'm going to do now is just put some dots around the circle, the inner circle. If my pen starts to fail, which it might do, I will swap. I'm doing all right at the moment. So just around the edge and and kind of closer to the line, I'm doing them, if I can, slightly more dense. And then, you know, just one or two knot. And the same for the other side of the circle. I'm going to go around here and dense near the near the center 
and then I shall do a few a bit further out like that but keeping it quite dense near that circular bit there and you can do this however you like but keeping it denser near the centre I think you'll agree it just makes it look a bit more natural in fact I might go back in actually to the ones in here because they don't my pen is not great there that's a bit better just very close to the edge I'm going to go in with a bit a bit more that will do that will do stop fiddling around stuff there you go one watercolor postcard fairly easy to do um, lots of fun and I'm going to have a go at making some more so hope you enjoyed that um, I will leave the link to the ladies um, well she's got a website I'll leave her a link to her a Tracy something I can't remember her surname um, but I'll leave a note a lo blah, blah, blah. I'll leave a link to her web page and you can find her classes and things if you're interested from there but anyway, thank you for watching. Have a lovely day and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.